Like and subscribe and click the bell icon to get new video updates. Philippines Congress proclaims Ferdinand Marcos Jr. as next president. Sarah Dutit as Vice President Ferdinand Marcos Jr. has been proclaimed the next President of the Philippines by a joint session of Congress following a landslide election triumph 36 years after his dictator father was ousted in a pro-democracy uprising. Mr. Marcos received more than 31 million votes and Ms. Dutit more than 32 million out of more than 55 million votes cast the Senate and House of Representatives also declared that his separately elected vice presidential running mate, Sarah Dutit, had won by a wide margin. She is the daughter of outgoing President Rodrigo Dutit, whose turbulent six-year term ends on June 30. They will lead a nation battered by COVID-19 lockdowns, crushing poverty, gaping inequality, Muslim and communist insurgencies, crime and political divisions further inflamed by the May 9 election. Mr. Marcos, a 64-year-old former governor, congressman and senator, has refused to acknowledge or apologize for massive human rights violations and plunder under his father's strongman rule and has defended his legacy. When they take office, Mr. Marcos and Ms. Dutit will likely face demands to prosecute her father over thousands of killings of mostly poor suspects under his years-long crackdown on illegal drugs. The deaths are currently under investigation by the International Criminal Court. Mr. Marcos received more than 31 million votes and Ms. Dutit more than 32 million out of more than 55 million votes cast in the election. It was the first majority presidential victory in the Asian democracy in decades. During the campaign, they avoided controversial issues and focused on a call for national unity, although their father's presidencies opened some of the most volatile divisions in the country's history. Read more Mr. Marcos appealed to be judged not by my ancestors, but by my actions. Senator Emi Marcos, the president-elect's sister, thanks those who voted for her brother after what she described as years of humiliation. We re very grateful for a second chance, she told reporters before the proclamation. Our family went through a lot, she said, citing all sorts of cases and ridicule against them. In Mr. Marcos's campaign headquarters, supporters waved Philippine flags, flashed the victory sign and held a streamer congratulating him and Ms. Dutit. Activists protest proclamations of candidates with questionable links still, both have been hounded by their father's reputations. Riot police used a water cannon and shields to prevent a few hundred activists from marching to Congress to oppose Wednesday's proclamations, injuring at least 14 protesters, the left-wing group Bayan said. It said the forceful dispersal could be a portent of things to come. Read more last week. Human rights activists submitted a petition to the Supreme Court against Mr. Marcos's eligibility, citing his past tax conviction. They asked the court to block his proclamation, but no such order was issued. The complaint was earlier dismissed by the Commission on Elections. His father was forced from power by a largely peaceful people power uprising in 1986 and died in 1989 while in exile in Hawaii without admitting any wrongdoing including accusations that he, his family and cronies amassed a fortune estimated to be up to, or greater than, $10 billion while he was in power. A Hawaii court later found him liable for human rights violations and awarded $2 billion U.S. dollars, $2.8 billion, from his estate to compensate more than 9,000 Filipinos who filed a lawsuit against him for torture, incarceration, extrajudicial killings and disappearances. His widow, Imelda Marcos, and their children were allowed to return to the Philippines in 1991 and worked on a stunning political comeback, helped by a well-funded social media campaign to refurbish the family name. Uncertainty how Ferdinand Jr. will face his father's bloody legacy Mr. Marcos will take over a deeply divided country with many reminders of the resistance against his strongman father. Along Metropolitan Manila's Main Avenue, Democracy shrines and monuments erected after Ferdinand Marcos's Saris downfall stand prominently.
The anniversary of his ouster is celebrated each year as a special national holiday, and a presidential commission that has worked for decades to recover ill-gotten wealth still exists. Mr Marcos has not explained how he will deal with such remainders of the past. What happens to all the monuments that commemorate all those lives lost? What happens to all those monuments that celebrate our collective victories? Ask Pio Abad, a Filipino artist who opened an art exhibit last month focusing on the extravagant lifestyle of the Marcoses when they were in power amid the country's appalling poverty. History is at stake and that is probably, for me, one of the largest things at risk, Abad said. AP